But I truly feel this is the most powerful player power. I know what it is. I Yes. And if you play <laughs> Everdell enough, you will know what this is. I just, I think it might be a little unbalanced. Welcome to Cloudy with a Chance of Meeples. A channel of conversation and board games. Hey, my name is Brent. And I'm Nicole. And welcome to Cloudy with a Chance of Meeples. And welcome to a top 10 list of the top 10 Everdell player powers. I'm excited about this. Oh yeah, me too. And I should say, my list is not necessarily the 10 best like powerful ones. There may be what I feel are some of the most powerful ones on there. But my list is the top 10 ones that I kind of have the most fun playing. Yeah, me too. When I made my list, I thought about which are the powers that I get the most excited about. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, that's it. I have not seen your list. No. You, I hope, have not seen my list. I haven't peeked. You have not? Nope. So, uh, there are 23 and we're doing the top 10. So, there, there are, uh, there's a good chance that we will have... A bunch of crossovers, oh, yeah. which is, is all right. <laughs> um, but we're going to rank what we feel are our top favorite Everdell player powers. So let us begin. Cue the thunder. So my number 10 favorite player power in Everdell is for a critter that loves to collect wood. And that is the squirrels. Something about the squirrels, I just love the fact that anytime you gain a twig, you can gain an additional twig and then you can use those twigs to substitute any other resources when you're building construction. So, you know, you can build a farm, let's say, with two twigs yeah. or I guess four twigs. I you haven't could build been a farm. with squirrels in so long. And there's just, and I know the hedgehogs are very similar. Yeah. You gain berries um, instead of twigs, and the berries you can use for construction mm -hmm. or critters. But I don't know, it's just something about the the squirrels. It's just fun, especially with some of the um, newer locations, forest locations, specifically in New Leaf. There's one where you can get four twigs yeah. in one location. Mm -hmm. So you go there, if you're the squirrel, you get five twigs. And I don't know, I just think that's a really cool player power. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. And of course, if you can combo that with, in fact, building the wood carver, you can then trade all those twigs for victory points. So my number 10 are the squirrels. Wow. Okay. My number 10 uh, will be the stoats. Stoats, ah, new leaf player power. Yeah. So that's a newer one. I've yep. only been the stoats a couple of times. Mm. But. Uh, Really like them. You can discard cards to get resources after you play a card. So mm -hmm. I think it's two cards for any resource. No, it's two cards for like a pebble and a oh, right. Uh, but then three three cards for, for a pebble. pebble. Yeah. So, so pebbles. Are I like that. More powerful, but mm -hmm. so. But every it, time it makes you play sense. a card, so then yeah, it's pretty cool. If you have um, you know cards like. The museum and you're picking up cards mm. every time you play a card then it's not that punish, then you, it's not that punishing then you have the cards to, to discard. do that with. yeah 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 hmm. so very it's cool neat. so that's number 10 moving on okay so my number nine is a player power that is connected to i guess green production and this is any guesses no no okay this is the toads oh the toads yes okay. so player power of the toads anytime you play a production card you can discard a card to activate it twice mm -hmm. and i feel that you know the toads may seem underpowered yeah um if you play <laughs> yes definitely if you play obviously um spire crest and you have the drought winter or weather that you can't even yes, use the, the toads player power. To yes me. it has happened to me too so yeah. the toads potentially may be really bad but i love the fact that you can discard a card and then activate that production card twice so you know you do your monk and you have a bunch of berries you get to activate that twice you could give four berries away right away for eight victory points you could use your storehouse twice you could use your carnival twice yeah um and then yep. with new leaf there's the the freight car which lets you pull off resources 
which is amazing. The magician yeah. lets you remove a card. So I think the toads are increasingly more powerful when you play with new leaf i can see them being underpowered but to me they're just so much fun and i love cards much like the squirrels where you can are much like the woodcarver where you can use your resources for just trade them in for straight victory points yeah, and i love having that stack of victory points those shinies in front of you so number yeah. nine for me are the toads uh my number nine is also toads no way <laughs> are you yeah. kidding no <laughs> Yeah. What? Wow. <laughs> I'm actually shocked that I didn't. You know what? I have fun playing. I know they're underpowered, but I like the toads. They are fun. They are fun. For all the reasons that I just said. Yes. There you go. Number nine for both of us <laughs> are the toads. Because I do. I play a lot of production cards. Farms. So it just makes sense. Farms. But anyway. <laughs> there you have it. Number nine, toads. Okay, so moving on to number eight. This player power is one of the newer ones that came out in the Mistwood expansion. Of course, there's only four of them. So if you know the expansion, you're quickly uh, process of elimination to figure out the spiders. Mm. I guess you're controlling Nightweave. I guess you could you could say that thematically. You're controlling Nightweave. I'm surprised by this. I don't know. I really like this. Wow. Nightweave is very similar to the rats in the sense of, yes, you know, the but rat I token. I hate the rats. I know you do hate <laughs> the rats, but I, I think you can really use this player power to your advantage. Because I guess the rats you, aren't on my list. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you put that big Nightweave token on, uh, you know, a forest location, a basic, basic um a okay. forest location, basic location. You could put it on the knoll, on on the journey, the market. You can yeah. put it virtually anywhere. Mm -hmm. And anytime someone goes there, you then can take a resource that you do not have, as well as you can draw a card. So I feel that you know you look at the forest locations and you look at what people are doing, where they're going, and you can strategically place Nightweave or that token, big critter. In a location you know that someone's going to go or you yourself are going to go. Yeah. So, just yes, for, when you play for with... example, here, here, for an example, you know, you put uh, that token on the three twigs to start the game. Knowing that you have a clock tower in your hand right. and you go get three twigs. That is exactly how you play with You immediately the take that pebble and you have all the resources you need for yeah. the clock tower and then you move Nightweave or that token to another location so I don't know I think they're they're known as sneaky I think it is on the player uh, on the the player power card and it's just a really fun mechanic mm -hmm. and it's it, you're kind of you're sneaky you're forward planning and making sure that you don't have one of the resources at all times and right. I don't know I love it spiders well, to each their own i guess <laughs> um my number eight is the otters ah resin i love the otters you can use resin for anything building anything especially when when you have you know you can build a resin refinery that's obviously a nice thing and then yeah the forest location that comes and out like yeah three, the three resin three resin yeah uh or there's like well, the market, Some other ones the market has the market, like two yeah. resin, so... So pretty much just go to take resin every single time and I can build whatever I want. And you did that wonderful. last time. I did you that. You played that. Oh, yeah. And you had the otters. You just went to the three loca three otter... Lo uh, three otter. Three <laughs> resin location. And you just got a ton of resin. Resin. Yeah. It's... I don't know. I think it's... People maybe overlook that one, but mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah. Not, my, not, not on my list, but it's a good one. Mm. So, number seven for me. Cruising right along. And this is a critter of green nature. Lime green. And this is the lizards. Not shocked. Not shocked? No. I won't be shocked if it's on your list as well. Lizards, you get, at the start of the game, you get all of the <laughs> forest locations. All, like whichever ones aren't on the main board, you get them in a little yep. stack at the start of the game. And then every season you get to draw three, pick one, and then make like private locations for Pretty only much, you can. Yeah. And, you know, others can't copy it with the lookout, right. which I think is fantastic. Yep. 
And so these are your own. If you're playing Spire Crest, they're not affected by weather. So if you have the weather That's in Spire huge. Crest where you can't visit fort lo forest locations, but yeah, you have one that you can go to. Mm -hmm. Like that's that, that's a big thing. So yeah. I just love the the options because you know when you're playing, well we obviously play at mostly two player count, but when you're playing a three player count, there's yeah there's only four forest locations, but the second one's not open until you play with four players. Right. And this just gives you another option. So my number seven are the lizards. Okay. Uh, my number seven are a flying creature. Okay, there's a bunch of them. I know. It's the bats. The bats? Yep. The archivists? The bats. So, the bats. Let me refresh myself here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You can take a card from the meadow and put it face down in front of you. And it's like you have your own, like, separate stack of cards in your hand. And you can do that every time you play a card. It's actually amazing. So you could you could have like a huge mitt full of cards. Yeah, and I have you just had hate draft from people. You take I've cards from the meadow that people want. In the bats, want. yeah, I've had a stack like a thick stack of cards. Yeah, and it's just basically deck diving, and also yeah, taking cards away from other people that they want, or taking cards that you want. So like, it's really good. So I like the bats. I know you can't the bouncing aspect of them. You can't discard them. Because that would be super overpowered if you could discard those. Oh, and then do the like the cemetery and, or something? No, or, like oh, if you oh, could like discard it, you could go on the journey. You just have a, like unlimited cards. Right. So that's the balancing aspect no. of the bats. But I get that. I think the bats, I'm not going to say which player power, I think the bats really do combat one specific player power, <laughs> which I'm sure will come up on both of our lists. You think so? Coming up. I don't and know. so that's, that's good. So that was but your number seven? Number seven, the bats. Yeah. Okay, so my number six is a creature that also has wings that we actually just talked about. It's the bats. The bats. Oh. Are, my number six is the bats for all the reasons that we already talked about. Cool. You can draw cards and... You haven't gotten to be the bats very often, I feel. No. And, and, but, and to be honest, we haven't played the New Leaf and Mistwood player powers we, near the amount of times we played the Belfair. Well, of course not. We haven't played them 200 times. No. no. Oh, we haven't played Belfair <laughs> quite 200 times, but Almost. a lot. <laughs> well over um, 150 for sure. <laughs> but I don't know. The bats, they're just fun. It's just a cool a cool thing that every time you play a card, like you get bats. a I don't like it cards. when you have the bats. No. Understandably so. When I do, it's great. <laughs> so that's uh, my number six. All right. Bats. My number six. Oh, I lost my paper. Um, oh, right, is the Axolotls. Ah. Um, I mean, that's a classic. Mm -hmm. That was one of my first favorites uh, that I ever played with. So, yeah, you have your little tokens. tokens. You put them out there, um, and then every time you go to a location there, then you just take get her. that. Mm -hmm. It's just a wild it's resource. It's a wild resource, yeah. I think these are actually the most powerful for so, me personally in Pearlbrook. Oh, yeah, because... Yeah, in Pearlbrook, you're scrounging, and you don't always know what you're gonna need in advance. So you have like just a wild. Yeah, when you go to right? those, when you so go to the all river destination. So you need a pebble and you don't have one. Oh, you have one because it's a wild, so it's fine. Because that's the only thing that about Pearlbrook that I shouldn't say that people don't like, but something that people don't like is when you go to those river destinations to get those pearls. You get the I first know. one, you get the free one. But then you got to flip over a card and it's just like, well, oh, what am I going to need? Am I, I don't have, to, have a resin. Am I going to have to discard cards whatever. or resources? <laughs> and with those axolotls, that's my favorite thing about them. When you tag team with Pearlbrook that yeah. you're able to. But just generally they're good. I like. And again. I like playing with them. So Something like what I talked about earlier. Yeah, the axolotl. You have the, the, the clock tower. Yeah. You go to the three twigs, get your get your token. Immediately, you can build a clock tower. Right. With one worker instead yeah. of two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, yeah. Good choice. It's great. That was your number six? Number six. Moving on. Okay, so my number five is another critter that has wings, but these wings are very delightful to look at. And that is because they are the wings of a butterfly. 
one of the newer player powers from the Mistwood expansion, butterflies. Um, it's not. It's a power, but it doesn't seem like it's a good power. You get to start your car, a hand with twelve cards, right? And you're the first player. Twelve cards. If you're playing five or six players, then you only get uh, eleven cards. Yeah. But you have that much more options when you have that many cards, and thinking about playing, I haven't had a chance to play Pearlbrook with the butterflies. But if you have the bridge, where you get one, uh, increase your hand limits for every pearl that you have. And if you're the butterflies, and in yeah. Pearlbrook, if you can have at a time like three, four pearls, like you could have like you have like sixteen. You cards could have like in your sixteen <laughs> cards, which is like just crazy. Oh, that's funny. I don't know. It just makes the the haven that much more exciting or viable and like, to also go the, to. Like your just expedition dump cards. and different things in Spirecrest too. Like mm-hmm. if you have to discard a bunch of. Sometimes with that expedition, you have to discard like. 10 cards and you're like well i can never physically do that well with the butterflies, butterflies you then you can take those <laughs> tiles so you have that yeah it opens up for the obviously the journey at the end of the game yep. the bard all um, those things yeah the all town crier all those ones victory you, points with cards so my number five is the butterflies all right my number five also has wings mm-hmm. but they're little bitty wings little bitty wings okay <laughs> <laughs> Clearly the cardinals. No, it's the honeybees. Oh, the honeybees, right. <laughs> one of the newer ones as well. Yeah. Also a new one. Um, so it's basically whenever you play a card you that isn't production, you get to activate one of the productions in your city, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you cannot so, I don't you can't use it in auto. No, but still. But still. Yeah, but it's still. It's powerful enough it's good. To, to get it's You just have to kind of strategize to well, just like with all the powers, you have to kind of play the game differently. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I like the honeybees a lot. Right on. You also have the honeybees, don't you? I'm not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My number four is one that you actually already mentioned. Is it the honeybees? It's not the honeybees. Okay. It is the axolotls okay. for all the reasons that I already shared. Yeah. Um, you know, just wild resources. It's just great to have a token that can be any resource at any given time. Yep. So I know you can only go uh, to the, I know. And the basic. The basic. I played actually the axolotls. You put one on each basic. There's eight basic locations. I've won with the axolotls having gone to two of them. That's it. Yep. So, Me too, I think. You know, two or three of them. Because some of the basic locations are like, why am I going to put a worker out for, for one, one berry. single berry <laughs> just to get a token? Uh, um, yeah. I don't go to that <laughs> normally but, anyways. whatever. But. <laughs> Still good. Still good. So, my number four, right, four is the axolotls. Okay. All right. Perfect. My number four has already been mentioned by you. Okay. I'm glad it's not been mentioned by you already. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, it is the butterflies. Butterflies, yeah. yeah. So I love having extra cards. Versatility. It's great. Anyway, moving on. There we are. Uh, quick and short. <laughs> My number three is also one with wings i feel like a lot of these good ones maybe not a lot of good Good ones ones. but (laughs) a a lot of the player powers on our list have wings and this is a player power that is has found has met its match from the bats and that is the starlings increase your hand limits and, and you can draw cards from the meadow before the bats i was like man this card or this player power the starlings not only can you have 11 cards but you can grab cards from the meadow like that's crazy and of course we played many games where the dungeon's out and i i'll just go anywhere to grab a card i don't care what it is at that point i'll go get a berry in a card just to take that dungeon from the meadow Mm -hmm. um but super powerful it's super powerful especially at the beginning of the game yeah because you can kind of set up you can kind of Screw other people. Yeah, you can. Yeah, the, the starlings can really absolutely 
oppose other players so, yeah. when you when you're taking cards that clearly are highly coveted and you just take him and put him in your hand. So and you have the higher hand limit, so you have the, the option to do that. Yeah. So my number three are the Starlings. All right. My number three um is one that I'm sure is on your list. Okay. And that is the Pilates. Number three. Number three. Really? Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. <laughs> I love the platypuses. They're amazing. They used to be your number one. I know, but the things have changed. I know one of yours. I don't know what your number one is. Actually, I think I know your one. <laughs> I don't know what your two is. But platypus is uh, also combative against the Starlings. I mean, yeah, you get victory points. It's wonderful. Uh, you trade those victory points in for extra resources. I know, but... And draw you start card. the game with five victory points. Yeah. To trade in. Yep. And it, it can prolong your spring for so long, it's ridiculous. I think like, I, I think, Yeah, I'm pretty sure with the platies, like, I've been in spring, or sorry, winter, for as long as you, until you're, like, at the end of summer. I've been in summer, you've been in winter. Like, it's <laughs> crazy. I can play, like, ten cards. Just in my first season with the pl- because I mean depending depending on the meadow depending on what's out there and whatever but I think that's the great balancing thing it is because you only have fifteen spots in your city and you're playing that so being said, many I have lost with them before yes because if you front load your your winter and your you spring front load and then you yeah and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you're like I have no room in my city for actually good cards that will but do you know how yeah it's true because end game you're, you're playing like. In winter, you're playing like a bunch of production cards so that you can reactivate everything in, right away. in spring, yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I love that one. Number three. Platypuses. <laughs> wow. Yep. Okay, so my number two, which I know is going to be your top two as well. Hmm. Um and, and I made mention at the top of the, the video that not all the player powers I feel are, on my list are like the most powerful. But I truly feel this is the most powerful player power. I know what it is. I, I, yes. And if you play <laughs> Everdell enough, you will know what this is. I just, I think it might be a little unbalanced. And so I don't always, if I have Seems it, I like don't this. always, always play it because I kind of want to play something else um to balance it and that is the pigs the pigs are insane like these if you're the pigs you start with all of the farms and you can build one for free after you prepare for season so you can have four free farms throughout the game yeah basic farms that gives you you know you got a handful of berries that's all right You also have four production cards. You have four common constructions. So if you're going for, you know, most green cards in your city or most production cards in your city, most constructions in your city, um, you're going to have a special event. Yeah. uh, Five common constructions. Oh, look, I already have four. Four of them. Um, Obviously, you can get two sets of husband and wife, hunters and gatherers. Which is insane. um, Which is, obviously, you got to find them. That's true. On top of that, if you compound um, the through the seasons farms, and those you're farms getting are, victory points, you're getting victory points, them. or you're reactivating a, <laughs> a, a production card. Yeah. Uh, imagine. Well, like, no, I don't have. That's to crazy. <laughs> um, they're they're harder to build. All those farms are harder to build. Uh, minus a little a couple bit of, harder. Yeah. Yeah. Extra resources are needed. So that, but and you, then on top of that, if you build the castle. You can build the castle, and then if you're playing legendary critters or legendary cards, you can have the strong root castle, and oh. then every common construction is worth two victory points. Oh, but they're also not, they don't take up space. And in they don't city. take up, the farms don't take up space. And so. You just have four extra spaces yeah, in your city. For, all for farms, but still, for every farms, farm is still, worth one victory point on and its more, own. And more. And then if you're getting your and free. And all the cards, resources. Yeah. And so. I don't know. It's crazy. They, they are so powerful and i know so you can say oh well oh and if any opponent builds a farm because anybody can build them you get two victory points from the bank i will say i will say i think it was whatever in the last two weeks sometime brent was the pigs 
We played. We were playing New Leaf. New yeah, Leaf. Yeah, we New, Leaf, New Leaf. Leaf. We were playing, and he got he got his record breaking score. One sixty. We have played this game two hundred thirty so times. So many times, and he did like that was way higher than you've ever had before. I think. Yeah, I think my score was like 30, previous was like one hundred and thirty five, and that was in Pearlbrook. So those scores are naturally higher, higher so, with those wonders. But yeah, the pigs. That I was don't know. insane. The only thing you can combat pigs is if you're playing in, you know, the four-player count, everybody else is buying farms yes. just so you don't get a free... But you don't get a free farm, you get two victory points instead. I know. So, I don't know. I think the pigs are severely overpowered. They're not my number one. Um, they're my number two, but that is where you have it. Pigs, number two. All right. I'm trying to figure out what your number one is. It's obvious. Oh, yes. Of course. <laughs> Now I know. Uh, my number two is also the pigs. Yeah. Now I don't know what your number one is. You probably uh, made up your own player power at this point. <laughs> I thought for sure Platy's was it's number one Nicole for you. It's the Nicole Ultimate Player Power. Ooh. It's whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> whatever I decide. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, yeah, the pigs. Amazing. We just talked about it. I don't need to talk about it again. So, number there two. There you have it. So, my number one, Nicole has already mentioned, and you can probably figure out it's been my number one for a while, and that is the platypuses. All right. You can just front load your game. You can, you know. I'm surprised you didn't choose the pigs. No, I see, I don't want to choose the pigs because. You feel it's cheating or what? Yeah, it's not cheating. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) I, I, I. Yeah. James, please weigh in on this. What do you think? Well, he already said that he, like. Hit his head against the wall trying to balance these player powers I endlessly. can't imagine. And I can't imagine. And they did they, a great job. Yeah. Because truly, it's they are all really balanced. Except for maybe slightly the pigs are not. But otherwise. But <laughs> my number one is the platypuses. All right. I love having the option to discard a victory point to gain a, re- gain a resource and draw a card. Yeah. Um, you start out with just this huge advantage. I feel. Yeah, I've... I've I know on uh, I know for a fact I've played games where I've built seven to eight cards in winter alone, and one of them was the yeah. carnival, and I'd already built at that point like yeah. my husband, my wife, my farm, a you resin just refinery, have so and many a chip sweep. I had so many resources, yeah. um, so I love the platypuses, potentially overpowered as well. But your number one, what is it? All right, my number one, the big reveal. What is it? I what is it? It be, it can't be the moles. It's the, yeah, it's the owls. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> just kidding. No. I don't like the owls. Um, it is the starlings. The starlings. Yeah. Oh, I already said the starlings. Yeah, okay. but I didn't. You're right. Yeah, oh, I love wow. the starlings. Yeah, I love them more than the platypuses now. Huh. So. I don't know. I just love having that advantage and being able to take things from the meadow. Mm -hmm. Often, I don't know why this happens, but it feels like when we set up the game and we like look at the meadow originally when we're starting out, there's always good cards in there Mm -hmm. and we're always like immediately fighting over them. So that just gives me that sense of like, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to take the card that we both want and put it in my hand. Like it's just so... It's just so great. <laughs> I, I don't know how I forgot Starlings. Yeah. <laughs> I talked about it and I forgot you didn't talk about it. And yeah, we... So there you have it. Those are our top 10 Everdell player powers. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So in the comments below, what are your top 10 player powers? Why? And why are... Our list, not as good as your list. I would love to know what they yeah, are. We would, would love to know. I would not love. Don't say that. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so comment. Let us know what Don't are the top opinions. 10 uh, <laughs> player powers for Everdell. <laughs> and um, we will be working on top 10 revised player or not player um, cards. Um, That's our next chore. Yes. Our next, our next project. Top ten. That's actually cards really exciting. Of Everdell. Yeah. Yes, we've already done it once. So if you don't know what our original top ten is, I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video. And until then, have fun playing Everdell. Hopefully, we gave some insight as to some maybe potential strategies on how to use these player powers to your advantage. 
And if not, hopefully you just enjoyed watching us chat about it. There you have it. <laughs> right on. My name is Brent. And I'm Nicole. Check us out on Facebook, Cloudy with a Chance Meeples. Remember, grab your umbrella. The forecast is cloudy with a Chance Meeples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember to grab your umbrella because the forecast is cloudy with a chance of meeples.